In this video, we focus on reflecting hyperbola about the y-axis and about the x-axis. Now, we have looked at reflections about these axes before. So when we reflect about the y-axis, you should remember that only the x-coordinates change sign. Okay, and it means that the graph is symmetrical about the y-axis, so mirror image. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight the y-axis for us so that we can more easily see what we are reflecting about because this graph is going to get messy. So I'd like to draw the reflection. If I look at the point A, the coordinates 3, 5 will go to negative 3, 5, where only the X coordinate has changed sign. The coordinates of the point B are 0, 2. Now, if only X changes sign, 0 doesn't, can't really change sign, so it stays the same. Now, notice my Y intercept does not change when I reflect about the Y axis. Okay. Now, what does also change is the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes have equations x equals the value of the coordinate that it passes through. So if this is an x coordinate, x coordinates change sign, so it will go to negative 2. Okay, but the horizontal asymptote, because it has a y value and y does not change anything, the, ver the, sorry, the horizontal asymptotes don't change. Drawing the graph of the reflection, one arm sits there and the other is about there. Okay, so notice the mirror image about the y-axis. Now looking at the equation of the reflected graph, okay, remember, so it says give the equation of g of x. So if we have g of x equals Remember that only the s coordinates change sign, so it will be the graph of f, but instead of positive x, I'm going to have negative x. Now that means wherever I have an x, I'm going to replace it with negative x. So I have that that is equal to 2 over, instead of x, I have negative x minus 2 plus 3. Now, if you've been asleep up until now, listen to this. This is not your final answer, because this is not in standard form. We do not have a coefficient to x in standard form. So what you need to do is factorize out that coefficient of x and move it to the numerator. Okay, so the coefficient of x is now negative 1. So I'm going to factorize out that negative. I'm left with a positive x in the bracket and positive 2. Okay. I still have the plus 3 there, but now remember with the rule of fractions, if I have one term in the numerator and one in the denominator, the negative can switch between the numerator and denominator, which is exactly what we are going to do. It goes to negative 2 in the numerator, and then we have x plus 2 in the denominator plus 3. That is your final answer. One quick method to check that you have indeed found the right equation is to check the equation of the vertical asymptote according to the graph. So if we take the denominator, which is x plus 2, make it equal to 0, solve for x, and that gives us x equals negative 2. And you can check, is that your vertical asymptote? Yes, it is. Okay. Reflecting about the x-axis. So here we have the same graph, but now we are going to reflect it about the x-axis. Now remember, in this reflection, only the y coordinates change sign. But the x coordinates remain the same. Now, if we look at the graph, what that means is that the horizontal asymptote is going to change. So where my horizontal asymptote's equation is currently y equals 3, it will go to y equals negative 3. Looking at the coordinates, I have the coordinate A with 3, 5, and that point will go to 3, negative 5. 
okay? And then I have the, the point B with the coordinate 0, 2, and if the Y coordinate changes, this will go to 0, negative 2. Okay, but the vertical asymptote remains unchanged because it is represented with a X. Okay, so drawing the graph of the reflection, one arm sits there, sorry, and the other arm goes through the point 3, negative 5, but does not touch the asymptotes. Okay, so just so that you can see that reflection more clearer, I'm going to highlight the x-axis. Okay, so we have reflected about the x-axis. Looking at the equation of the reflection, so it says give the equation of g of x, which is f of x reflected about the x-axis. Now, if only the y-coordinates change sign, g of x will be equivalent to negative f of x. Remember, f of x represents y, so it goes from positive y to negative y. And all we have to do now is substitute f of x, which is 2 over x minus 2 plus 3, and then distribute that negative into the brackets. Now, to the first term in the brackets, that negative goes to the numerator only. We do not distribute it to the numerator and the denominator. Okay? And then distributing it to the positive 3, it becomes negative 3. And that is your final answer.